take his path straight, and all mankind shall see the salvation of God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar's reign, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod, tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, tetrarch of the lands of Ituria and Traconitus, Lysantius, tetrarch of Abilene, during the pontificate of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went through the whole Jordan district, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the sayings of the prophet Isaiah. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare a way for the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley will be filled in. Every mountain and hill will be laid low. Winding ways will be straightened and rough roads made smooth. And all mankind shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Over the past few weeks, we've been running a series of homilies and presentations about our vision for the next five years for the parishes of St. Bernadette's and for St. John Bosco. In having a vision, we are doing, in a sense, what we hear in the liturgy of the Word today. Baruch talks about that time when the temple will be restored, the temple of if you remember, for the people of Israel, is that meeting place between Israel and God. It's a sacred place. It lies in ruins. And Baruch is encouraging a group of people to go back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. And, and he has this prophecy that we need to, that, and it comes from God, but we need to straighten the road we need to fill in the valleys and take down the mountains and, and make a road so that people can go to God easily. To make a highway to God is what Baruch is visioning. In the gospel today, we hear John the Baptist saying exactly the same thing. Prepare a way for the Lord. Make a highway for the Lord so that people can come easily to him. You know, that sums up what we are called to be as a parish. We are the people called to make a highway for the Lord so that in our context, the people of Erskine will have a straight path to come to God. That, that's our purpose. And that's why we have a vision. That's why we have a plan for the next five years. Our plan is about how do we build that highway? How do we fill in the valleys and take down the mountains and take away all the obstacles that people experience in coming to a relationship with God? That's what our plan is all about. And one of the key parts of what it means to be a, a missionary disciple is how we worship. You know, the fundamental purpose of human beings is to worship God. We find that in the very first chapters of the book of Genesis. That when God creates, he creates all the material things and that they are good. But when it comes to human beings, he creates us and we are very good and we are the last of the line. Not because we are more important than anything else, but because we have the ability, a God-given ability, to speak for the whole of creation to worship God. And the call that we have to make in preparing this path 
is to ensure that we worship well, that we do everything to the best of our ability to enable people to come and to worship him. And so I'm going to invite Anne-Marie to come forward now just to talk to us a wee bit more about our vision for worship. Thanks, Father David. And for those who don't know me, I'm Anne-Marie Mulwain, <clears throat> and I'm a member of the SLT for the parishes in Erskine, St Bernadette's and St John Bosco. So I'm here to talk to you <clears throat> and share thoughts with you about worship. In every church, we go through doors into a sacred space, like this one. And maybe we've already got the smell of polish or incense, a sight of the flowers on the altar, and a few nods along the way and smiles as we make our way to our favourite seat. Time for a prayer or two before it begins. And if you're new to the church, it's time to have a wee look round. But most people seem to be engaged in prayer or reading a prayer book. So it doesn't seem the right thing to do. But what happens behind those doors? What do we expect when we get in? What memories do we have of other occasions, other experiences? Are we new and a bit scared that we will do something wrong? Will it be quick and painless, like all the best medicine? And will it be over soon? It can't be any worse than it was last week. But what is about to happen is worship. Worship means a feeling or expression of reverence and adoration for a deity, for our God. Wow, it's a feeling of reverence and the feeling of adoration. So we should be moved and stirred and excited by the worship as we gather. Inside those doors, whatever we do should be the best that we can do. And the church describes the celebration of the Eucharist as the source and summit. You can go no higher, no better, no deeper, no closer than our celebration of the Eucharist. Our sacramental journey should be fruitful. Our gathering together, moments where we encounter the very person of Jesus in the heart of the community. The story of the paralysed man helps us to consider how much we want to be close to Jesus. There is so much that we can take from this miraculous event. People are eagerly gathering to hear every word that Jesus has to say. They are on rooftops, hanging from the windows, taking up every space available inside. And a paralysed man has been brought close to the house by his friends. They have walked with him on a stretcher, not an easy task. They can't get near Jesus because of the crowd, but they are desperate to get close and they push their way forward, but the crowd have no sympathy for that. They try to get close, but the only way seems to go on the roof. You can imagine the scene. People probably help them get the man on the roof, but the rooftop is no place for a paralyzed man, still no closer to Jesus unless they get a bigger hole in the roof and lower him down, and they try every possible way to get him closer to Jesus. Why? If only their friend can be close to him, can he encounter this man, Jesus of Nazareth? And if he can, he will be totally transformed. If he can be in his presence, he will be healed. If he can speak to him, his life will never be the same. So can we say the same for our worship? Do we believe that we will be transformed? Do we believe that we can be healed? Do we believe that our lives will never be the same? Do we believe that in the singing of the hymns, our hearts can be touched with his love? Do we believe that every word, every sign, every movement can touch the hearts of the faithful? Will we move heaven and earth to be closer to Jesus? Will we climb on the rooftops to even hear his words? Will we be desperate to come closer to Jesus in the silence of our hearts? Will we be the ones to bring our friends to Jesus, overcoming every barrier just to be close to him? It has to be yes, a resounding yes. 
When we worship, we have to be clear about what we should be doing. We are the branches, we are connected, we are bringing forth fruit, and we are supporting the new vines. We are stronger together, and we can keep producing fruit for the good of all. And we means everyone. So how can we support the worship and the celebration of the Eucharist? Father David often speaks of the three H's, and these are the foundation for all that we do. Our hymns, our homilies, our hospitality. Our hymns should be the best that can be fitting to the celebration and performed well. Our musicians, including myself, should spend time in prayer, offering their gifts and talents to God and asking him to bless them in their ministry. Homilies are the gift that our priest can give us each week. Thought-provoking, challenging, clearly understood and invitational, always calling us closer to Christ. In this church, we've made every effort to reach out during the pandemic, and we are still on that journey. Hospitality has been so important during the pandemic as people nervously enter the church again. Although there's a team for hospitality, it's a job for everyone. Each Sunday, our congregation changes. Some need healing. Some are worried. Some want to share good news. And some are lonely. Some have family difficulties and some have lost their way. And you are sitting beside them. You are sharing the sign of peace with them. You are the only person to come close to them this Sunday. And your smile will mean so much. We have a ministry to children as part of our celebration and currently we run an online kids church due to the COVID restrictions and this is available on our website. Our primary schools contact the parents each and every week, inviting them to take part and keeping them up to date with information about the parishes. We have Caritas candidates in our Trinity High School that can be serving our parish and helping it to grow. We have Pope Francis Faith Award candidates that can be using their gifts and talents in this community. And we have some people in the RCIA programme and they need support. And we have members of the New Alpha programme starting in January. We have people who have joined life groups for the first time and those that have been running right through the closures. We have all those involved in outreach and some of them have come back to church because they have enjoyed serving and they are sitting next to you. There's a sacramental preparation for our children to be baptised and we would want parents to commit to the Alpha programme for baptism. First communicant parents would be invited to take part in a series of events aimed at bringing them closer to Christ and more confident in supporting their children in their journey of faith. They are the most important educators in that journey of faith. When you're in an aeroplane and there is a problem, the adults will be given masks first so that they can help the children. But are we spending enough time with parents, supporting them in their journey of faith? People preparing for marriage could commit to an alpha programme for marriage, a series of talks aimed at helping them to build strong foundations for their married life and strong connections with their parish. No matter what we do, it is connected, it's like the vine, and now we need to tend that vine. We need to look and see how we can strengthen it. We need to have fruit growing strong and healthy. We are like the friends of the paralysed man, overcoming every barrier to bring their friend close to Jesus. Thank you for listening, and please pray for our parishes that our fruitfulness will be seen in many more people coming to worship standing room only, churches filled to the brim and spilling over, eager to meet Jesus and to be his witnesses. Thank you. Thank you.